Tom and this is Shifter, a channel all about urban cycling and bike commuting. Welcome to all you new subscribers out there and if you haven't subscribed and you like this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. So two things prompted this video. One is that it's pretty much spring now, which means the streets in lots of places are pretty wet and pretty muddy. And the second thing is my bike, you may have noticed this if you're eagle-eyed and care about this sort of thing, but I've been missing a front fender for quite a while. I actually broke it off several weeks ago because of my own mechanical ineptitude in installing it, and I've yet to replace it. And actually throughout most of the winter, I didn't miss it that much, which made me wonder, do I need a fender at all? And so here I've got four different types of fenders, and I thought today I would test them all out in some somewhat wet and muddy conditions and see how things go uh, to determine, one, whether I need a fender at all for urban cycling, and two, what's the best type of fender? Now, I wouldn't say this is a review of fenders. Uh, I won't, I'll mention the brands, but this isn't about specific brands. It's more about the broad types of fenders. And so we'll test out four different types of fenders and we'll figure out what's the best one. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here are the four different types of fenders that I'm going to test today. The first is uh, sort of the classic urban fender. This is like the complete wraparound kind. The second is more of this um, mountain bike style. This, it just latches on really quickly to your frame. So it's a frame mounted type. Third is the super cheap uh, mud guard. It's basically a shaped piece of plastic. And the last is a empty water bottle, which I will explain <laughs> a bit more later. And I'll be testing these fenders, uh, how they mount, uh, sort of the convenience of riding with them and that sort of thing. But I was trying to think of the best way to test how well they are keeping mud off of you. And so for that, I dug into my bin of Halloween costumes and pulled out a remnant of when I dressed up as a sailor. And I've got some white pants and we'll see how muddy we get. I mean, I don't know why I still have these. Who knows, maybe someday I'll get invited to a yacht party. So it's always good to have a white pair of pants, I guess. Well, anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Well, there we go. Both my sense of fashion and my dignity are out the window, but hopefully this helps make better decisions about fenders. Okay, so I found a empty parking lot that's got some puddles and a little bit of mud and snow. It's not exactly monsoon season here, so we're not gonna get much better than this, but it should give us enough information to determine which fenders are best. I'm gonna start with these full fenders. This is the style that came with my bike. This is a Priority Continuum Onyx, which is my, uh, my winter bike, which I really like. Um, I'm just gonna use the front fender because the back one is basically the same thing and it's also got the built-in hub dynamo light, the automatic light, which I really like, so I don't wanna mess with that. I'm just gonna try out this front fender. So I'll install it, rip around in the uh, mud and the puddles, and uh, we'll see. Let's see how it protects my yacht pants. Okay, there's the front fender installed. It definitely takes a bit of work. You need some tools and you need a bit of time and it's a little fiddly to get it adjusted so that your wheel is spinning without rubbing on it. As you can see, it's pretty complete. It covers a lot of space, uh, which means it probably takes a lot of mud off of your pants, but let's give it a try. Okay, that was the full fenders. How did we do? Let's see. The pants are still pretty white. Oh, there is some mud splatter down at the bottom near the cuff. And actually there's a bit of mud on my boots too. I didn't expect that. Maybe I should have got some white boots. So I expected these to be the best because they cover the most wheel real estate, I guess. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised how much mud I've got down there. The big test, how's my butt? I never thought I'd be the kind of YouTuber who would ask you to look at my butt, but there you go. Uh, let's check it out. So not bad. I mean, the real test here is to is to see whether you can just ride normally to work without having to change your clothes. You don't want to dress for your for your journey. You want to dress for the destination. So can I get to work in a muddy in wet muddy conditions without having to change pants? Maybe you might have to get to work and brush those cuffs off and maybe have a change of shoes. But these full fenders are pretty good. 
Okay, real talk. I just finished testing those full fenders and uh, actually you probably noticed this too is they weren't installed perfectly right. So I just spent like 45 minutes with a wrench and some pliers tweaking them so they fit exactly right. The test results for the purposes of this video were the same. Didn't make any difference on my pants, but that is something to think about. That type of fender does take a lot of tweaking to get it perfect because it took me so long to get those fenders perfect. I just left them. I switched bikes. I didn't want to take them off the other bike for the next round of tests. So I got a different bike. Uh, the next type is these uh, clamp on mud guards. You see these mostly for mountain bikers. Um, but I figure if they're good enough for a mountain bike, you know, splashing through muddy trails, they're probably going to work pretty well on a city bike as well. The other nice thing about these is they're really easy to install. Okay, there we go. That took less than five minutes compared to like 45 minutes for the other uh, type of fender. Initial impressions, how do they look? Not great, they're kind of ugly, aren't they? Yeah, they don't, they don't mesh seamlessly into the bike the way those full frame fenders do. Uh, so if that matters to you, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper than the full fenders. These are $45 compared to about $65. For but the fact that they go on so easily is probably a bonus. If you're the type of uh, cyclist who just wants to put fenders on when it's raining out and you want to be able to take them off when it's, when it's not rainy, these are a much better option. They go on and off really easily. They're pretty simple. Let's see, uh, see how they do. I guess that means I have to put those white pants on again. God, whose idea was that anyway? Okay, that was a much different riding experience, I have to say. Look at my pants. It's like that front fender didn't work at all. I even, I even had to stop and adjust it a bit because I thought I did something wrong, but I think it's installed properly. But look at the bottom of my pants. They are covered and splattered. And my butt, my butt's better. So it seems like that back fender works better than the front fender, but it's definitely more dirty than the full fenders. So these ones are definitely less effective at keeping the mud off of your pants when you're riding through puddles. Hmm, interesting. Okay, on to our final test. Okay, the final test, and we'll call this the $20 solution test. I'm trying to use fenders for the cheapest way possible. And so there's two things I'm testing here. One is this Fox mud guard. Again, this is really built for mountain bikers, but hey, I thought I'd give it a shot. This was like 18 bucks and it's really simple to install. You just get a couple of these zip ties or cable ties um, and uh, affix it to the front. And even cheaper on the back, I'm going with the old empty plastic bottle solution, which is, uh, I've never tried this before, but I'm gonna try it today. You basically, cut a hole, affix it to the back of your bike here with the idea that if it's hang dangling there, it's gonna catch some of the mud that would get up your back. Will it work? I have no idea, but hey, that's why we're testing. Let's give it a shot. Okay, here's the $20 solution. So this Fox mountain biking mud guard Went on fairly easily, a little bit more tricky to put on than the last pair, but definitely easier than the full fender. Um, I actually think this was built more for like a wider suspension fork, but it's on there and it's worth a shot. It might work, who knows? And then at the back, the DIY solution. Uh, I'm skeptical, but you know, the cost was, there was no cost basically. So it's worth a try. How do they look? They both look a little ridiculous if you ask me but this is about practicality, right? Okay, let's go uh, get wet in the puddle. There is the $20 solution. How do the pants look? Pretty terrible. Now, keep in mind, some of this splatter is from the last pair of mud guards I tried, but the $20 solution is definitely the worst one. The mud got up higher on my, on my legs. My boots are uh, dirtier than anything else. Uh, my butt oh, even got up on my back. So not only did the mud guard on the front not work, the DIY solution on the back did not work either. That's a lot of mud for a bike that ostensibly has mud guards on it. Well, that brings us to the end of our mud guard slash fender test. And here is the evidence of its success or failure. These pants may never be worn again. <laughs> Um, 
So I learned a lot from this. Uh, often when I do these tests, it's a pretty close call between uh, two different options, but in this time, it was not a close call at all. I would say if you're really concerned about keeping your clothes clean and dry when you're riding in a city, on your bike commute, or just around the city, you have one option, get full fenders. Don't waste your money on anything else. From what happened to me today, I'd say it's not worth your money to do anything else. Even if you wanna take them on and off, it's almost better to have nothing because at least then you don't have this false sense of security. They did, you know, the full fenders were great. The other ones did almost nothing. So not even, not even a close call, a clear cut winner today. So yeah, I learned a lot. I think I'll be installing full fenders on this bike as soon as I can. Uh, I also learned uh, if you are commuting, don't wear white pants. Uh, because even if you have full fenders, you're gonna get your cuffs a little dirty and maybe your shoes a little dirty. And perhaps most importantly is, if you were planning on inviting me to your yacht party, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna make it. I've got nothing to wear anymore. Thanks for watching, see you next time.